everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're going to be doing some more quick watercolouring with a little bit of a twist. I've seen loads of posts online just recently about how people are struggling to get back into art or just their creativity has left them and I've always found that doing something quick and simple that produces some sort of result is a great way to sort of boost yourself back into arting in general or maybe just trying something a little bit different. So what we are doing is very straightforward so even if you're not that skilled with watercolour you can still try this out and it's not going to take a huge chunk out your day. We're all very very busy people these days and if you can find yourself 20 minutes half an hour then you can give this a shot. So the things that I'm using today I've got a little cheap watercolour sketchbook some of you have seen this before and this is one of the Arteza watercolour sketchbooks. They do have a tendency to pop up so I've got myself a, a very attractive purple bulldog clip here and I'm just going to pin this page down on the left hand side so that I've got two side by side. We are going to do two today. One is a flower and one is a leaf. Two paint brushes. I've got my Sea White Synthetic number no. 6 round here. This is a, a favourite of mine. I sell these in the stash shop. They're very affordable and quite robust brushes and they work quite well with watercolour as well as other mediums. So they're always good for a shout. And I've also got my Jackson's Quill brush and this is the 10 stroke 0. This is the smallest one they do in these brushes. This was actually introduced to me by Julia Kay from Julia Kay Art Studios. And that's convenient because I've got two sets of watercolour paints today. This is my Julia or one of my Julia K tins and we're going to be using some of her glitter pigments today. So it's going to make her piece a little bit more interesting. She does sell these individually in half pans and full pans as well like this one over on her Etsy store. So I'll leave the link to that down in the description. I am a huge fan of Julia's paints. They are handmade and they're made with Swedish honey which is just awesome. So if you fancy checking that out you you can check out the description underneath the video. She also has a YouTube channel where she does some vlogging as well about making her paints and just generally her life. So if you fancy checking that out, I'll leave a link to that too. The other set of paints that I've got are my Windsor & Newton Cotman Studio set. So these are student grade mass manufactured paints and I find them great for little projects like this. This is the biggest set. They do start in sets of six all the way up to this big bad boy here. And uh, this is just my sort of go-to, really good range of basic colours if you're not worried about, you know, having really high quality, high-end paints. Uh, these will do a job for you. They'll do a job for you anyway if they're very light fast. So if you do want to paint something a bit more interesting or you're doing a commission, these will still do a job for you. The last thing that I've got, this is probably the most important part of this video and what's going to make it a little bit more interesting for us. I have a tube of the Schmincke masking fluid. I've tried quite a few masking fluids now and uh, I, I have to say I'm kind of, um, I have to say I find them a bit repellent generally uh, but this Schmincke one I like very much because it's got this lovely little nib on it. It's very very easy to control and there's not a huge amount of odour that comes off it either which is something that always gets me. Chem strong chemically smells and I just don't get on. And the fact that it's blue as well, you can see where you're putting it down if you're using white paper. I don't know why people invented white masking fluid. It was the worst idea ever. So I highly recommend this. There are other brands that come in pen form. I think Molotov do one as well. Um, so anything like that's going to be really handy. But the, the added advantage of this is you can use this for tiny, tiny details. Okay, so the two things we're going to be painting today are an amaryllis flower because they're pretty and they're colourful and they're cheerful and also a caladium leaf and I thought that would be really interesting for us to try with the masking fluid as well. So you can do this in stages again if you don't have much time. This is the beauty of something like this. So the first thing we do is want to sketch out what we want to paint. So I'm going to start on my right hand page here. So I've got one page for each here and this is just for obviously the ease of filming. So I think I'll have my caladium leaf this way because they're quite big and they're a really basic heart shape. They're uh, they're not complicated at all. We'll maybe give it a bit more of an interesting edge. Make it a, a wee bit wiggly down one side. Why not? When you're sketching things like this, out, out, an HB pencil is great or a number two. 
Uh, I have an F pencil here, but it really doesn't matter as long as you're not going into the bees because that's very soft and smudgy and we don't want that muddy and, and poking through our watercolour. Bearing in mind that our watercolour is quite transparent. For our am amaryllis flower, this is more of a sort of star shape. So when, you know, when you're drawing things like this, if you look at nature, the shape of flowers and leaves and flora in general, they usually are quite simple shapes. So when it comes to actually sketching out what you need, it's, it's not going to be that complicated, really. There's loads of ref reference images on Google. You will not struggle to find reference images for these. And that's one of the reasons that I've picked these, actually, so that it's accessible as possible. And I'm pretty sure some of you will have some of these growing somewhere in your vicinity. So as a general rule, the amaryllis tends to have six petals. Not always, but most of the time. So you can bear that in mind when you're, when you're drawing. So they've got this kind of oval shape and some of the petals have like a little tip on them, you know, like a little pointy bit. And they are not all a uniform width from here to here. Some are fatter, some are thinner. Okay, and these flowers have quite interesting center pieces. Um, the, the stigma, that's like the sticky part. They kind of, they're kind of on stalks. So we want some of those in, look like little matchsticks. And then they've got this color differentiation. So they're paler here in the middle. And then the bright, bright colour extends out over the rest of the petals. So if we just mark those in really roughly, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be really precise. As long as you've got an indication there, because again we're gonna do I say this quite a lot, don't I? We're gonna do most of the work with the with the paint rather than our pencil. I'm just gonna stick in a bit of a centre line down here for guidance. Okay, so the next step is we want to get our masking fluid on. I always think the pattern on the leaves of the caladium looks as if someone's like splattered paint on it and I think that's why it appeals to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a few sections. So I've got this centre line here and that's where I'm working from. So I just want to start by plopping a little bit down and then I'm just going to move it around and manipulate it around the paper a little bit. Now it doesn't matter if there's little holes, you know, if it, if it doesn't cover an entire area, that's actually going to look a bit more authentic. So I'm going to be quite haphazard with this. So this is basically just your excuse to make a mess, guys, and say, tell it it's art. <laughs> but the concentration of the, the paler area is towards this centre part. So see, that's why I always think it looks like a splatter mark. So if we just work our way around, so you can see how easily I'm getting on with this masking fluid. No messing about with brushes or, you know, trying to clean them or anything. It's just straight out the tube. Excellent job. I found as well on lower quality paper, because these are Arteza sketchbooks, uh, the watercolour sketchbooks. I mean, they're okay, but they're not the highest quality paper. And the, the masking fluid itself seems to be really kind to the paper. So this is the fun part. Like, this is fun. You can make your pattern really random, but if you use that same center point and work out the way and then at this latter part down the way that's going to give you something that looks quite authentic so if you just keep that idea of the splatter in your mind so while that one's drying I'm going to come over here and what I want to do is something quite similar here in the amaryllis there is this as I talked about this paler center part but there's also very fine paler lines that sort of shoot off from that and then I can flick in these lines that I was talking about so I'm just using the masking fluid that's on the paper already. I'm not adding in any more. Okay, there we go. So we are now ready. So this is the great thing. Just as I was saying, if you don't have a lot of time, you can do this step and you can leave this till like the next day or whenever and give that plenty of time to dry. So even if you only have a snippet of time, you can take 10 minutes to sketch out what you're doing and put your masking fluid on and you can walk away and come back to it. So I'm just going to leave this to dry now and I'll pop back once we are ready to go. All right, so we're nice and dry now. Well, when I say dry, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. So we're going to start with the Cotman set here. I'll pull in Julia's sparkly paints in just a minute. And this is the reason why I have two paintbrushes. So I'm going to have one for sparkly paint and one for not so sparkly paint. And uh, my preference is to use the synthetic sea white brush for the normal paint. It seems to be easier to get the sparkly paint out of the bristles of this one than this one so there's a warning to you and I'm going to start on again just being left-handed obviously I don't want to be working in wet paint so I'm going to start here so we'll turn this around like this 
and the, there's quite a range of colours in the green part of the caladium leaves. So I want to start with quite a bright, vibrant green. And uh, I'm going to take the sap green and I'm going to take it in its purest form. So you don't need to worry about mixing colours or anything like that. As I said, this is really, really straightforward. It's accessible to everybody. So I'm just going to cover the entire shape with this sap green. You could actually just put this sap green down and call it done. It looks pretty as it is. And I'm not too bother bothered about having a particularly smooth, even colour because, again, we're talking about leaves here. So there's going to be a little bit of variation. Just in the, or under the organicness. <laughs> That's a very technical word, isn't it? Uh, not just in the organicness of the leaf, it's the leaf itself, but also how the light's hitting it in one thing and another. So you don't have to take too much care. And this is one of the really nice things about watercolour, especially when painting nature and I think it was designed for it because you're kind of letting the paint do what it wants to do as well and that gives it you know that sort of giving it its own freedom so we'll leave that to dry and we can jump over to our, our amaryllis now I do believe these come in slightly different colours uh, the, the photos that I was looking at earlier the, there was quite a lot of kind of like orangey ones so I've got the cadmium red pale hue which is it's not a true orange but it's heading from red into orange if you think about your colour wheel so I'll put a little bit of that just I've just got a ceramic palette off to the side here maybe if I put that there that would be helpful wouldn't it come on Jem help the cavers out here <laughs> so yeah just grab that that cadmium red hue now you can see it does look quite orangey and basically the same thing again I do want this quite diluted and uh, to just to check the dilution I just use a scrap of paper nothing fancy this is an old list for something here and just test that out there. Okay, so very wishy-washy, but that's what we want because we can always build up in layers. So I'm just going to grab that. And again, exactly the same thing as I did over the road next door here. And I'm just going to go petal by petal. Nothing spectacular. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to alternate these petals. So give this time to dry so that the colour doesn't bleed into the petal next door. And that's just to help give us definition on each of our petals because that's going to help us get a bit of dimension. And this is why quite often when I'm doing little projects like this, I work on two at a time side by side, so I can jump back and forth. So it means I'm making the best use of my time. You know, we're efficient. Not only are we creative, but we're efficient as well. I don't know what was wrong with these cows today. <laughs> Keep saying wouldn't be a cave video without some mooing. This will all stop soon, though the cows are going to be going in at the end of October, so they're housed inside over the winter, because it's really harsh outside here in the winter. So there will be there will be no mooing. If we come back to our caladium now, this is starting to dry. So the next thing I want to do is to just deepen what we've got here, because obviously we've only got one layer of paint. So I'm going to lift some of my sap green again. And I'm going to add a tiny, tiny smidge of phthalo blue to it, to give me this kind of idea. And I want to add this in down this centre line, so that's going to help almost give us a crease. So I'm doing this while the original layer is damp, it's not wet. But I'm just going to pop some of that down. Again, really not being all that careful here, don't need to be. Maybe bring this right out on this side, maybe the, maybe the light's coming from this side. And the next thing I'm going to do, just with this same colour, I want to pop a little bit of this in on the stock. like this. And while that's still wet, I want to, to grab a, a slightly pinkish colour. So in this case, I'm going to grab the alizarin crimson and it really doesn't matter, any sort of pinkish colour. Again, I'll show you here. So even a magenta would do as well. And while that's damp, I'm just going to pop a little bit of that in there, right at the top, and then flick it down the stalk here. Okay, so while that's drying, we'll nip back over here. So I'm just going to carry on with my petals here. Now that these ones are dry, I can do the other ones. So I'm just following my sketch lines here. Okay, so again, back while this area is still damp, I'm going to take a dark green. So I've got Hooker's Green Dark. Again, any sort of dark green will do, as long as it leans more towards yellow than blue. So, you know, you don't want anything um, heading into like a turquoisey colour. And I really want to darken down this top part here. So I'm going to put in a little bit of that, just in this maybe 
top half and down this middle section and then clean my brush off and just with a, a slightly damp brush just start to pull that out a little bit and the same here just soften these edges down here now what I do feel is that my edges around the outside they're too pale I want those to be a bit more you know a bit more obvious so I'm just going back to my plain sap green here and I'm just going to take a quick sweep of that down and just let it blend in with the paint that's already wet it's not a, a big deal got a bit of a wonky line there Imagine that, Gem has a wonky line, who'd have thunk it? <laughs> okay, we're going to leave that to dry now. And if we pop back over here, we'll see how we're doing. Okay, so we've got our base colour for our petals here. And the next step is to really, is to make them a bit less flat and a bit more vibrant. So I'm taking a straight orange here. So I've got cadmium orange hue. Again, any orange will do, don't be fussy. And we want to think about the darker areas. So in here at the base of these petals and I'm thinking maybe that this one might be in shadow a little bit on this side so I'm going to pop that in there clean my brush off just a damp brush now and then start to pull that out and again I'm using a flicky motion because if you look at the characteristics of these particular petals they, they have quite a lot of lines on them and again this one here maybe this is darker as well and just again damp brush I'm going to blend this out here just to soften it out so you can play about with this you know experiment a little bit don't have it all uniform let your let your brush muck about a bit find out what it likes I'm going to have less if the light's going to be hitting on this side I'm going to use less of this cadmium orange here and then for this last one here, I feel as if this petal's sitting up towards the viewer. So this one's like, you know, the, the, these ones are in behind this bottom one. So when I take my cadmium orange this time, I'll take a little bit off my pan and plonk it in here. And then I'm just going to add a tiny spot of water to it. So while that's drying, we are going to come back down here. And in at my stock, I just want to add in a tiny little bit of shadow at that top area there. So a dark blue or a Payne's grey, an indigo, anything like that. And a lot of you will know that I favour a dark blue for shadows. That's that's just me. You don't have to use a dark blue. You could use a, a dark anything. Um, I've got indigo here, which again, I tend to lean towards. That's just my preference. So a tiny little dot of that just in at the edge of our her leaf and just very gently there we go so that just gives us a little bit more definition there and now comes the fun part we're going to take off our masking fluid now you do have to be quite gentle you can use a kneaded eraser uh, I do find that the schmincke one comes off if you just use your finger and that is going to reveal the nice crispy white where the paint hasn't been able to penetrate and soak into the paper this is a great part as well see if you've got kids that like peeling PVA glue off their fingers. As long as you can teach them to be gentle, they can have great fun doing this bit for you. <laughs> okay, so there we go. You can see that's left us some nice, bright, fresh areas. Okay, I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute because this is dry over here. This is what I was talking about efficiency. So again, just my uh, C White synthetic brush here. Now I'm gonna go back to the cadmium red pale hue. So that was the original color that I used. And this time I'm gonna lift it straight from the pan. I'm not diluting it. And I'm gonna pop some of that right in at the base here, just in certain areas. So again, those leaves that are, leaves, so those, those petals that are kind of hiding underneath. Again, we'll let that dry. Okay, so here comes the really fun part. This is where I grab Julia's super shiny sparkly paints. And I have the ideal colour here and it's called Vendela. This one here, it's very close to the colour that we need and it's got just a bit of shimmer in it. So I've got my Jackson's Quill brush now. Separate pot of water because the sparkles get everywhere. And I'm pretty sure you can see in amongst my paint puck there, there's sparkles all going on it was from painting earlier on just wet this a little bit now with most sparkly paints you do need to kind of swoosh it about a bit and it's just to make sure that the pigments mixed in with the the metallic aspect of it so i like to give it a minute give it a shimmy and then i am literally just going to start filling in some of these areas so you don't need to be overly concerned about staying in your white parts uh, it's not that big a deal Obviously try and keep in them as much as you can because there was a reason we masked it off. But if it does happen to go over into the green, don't worry about it. Just do not worry about it. But you can see this is such a good pigment for this. This paint colour is perfect for this. 
and you just have to work your way around. Now, normally with sections like this, if I was using flat paint, I would take some time to make some dark areas and light areas and kind of follow the idea that we did with the main part of the leaf. But because this is shimmery paint, if you tilt it in the light, it's kind of going to do the work for you. So it almost looks like a map of some description in the little islands here. And there we go, we'll leave that to dry. So now it's time to take off our masking fluid here. And already we are starting to look a bit more like an amaryllis. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in this centre section is uh, put in my little stigma again. Now I can still see my pencil lines. If your pencil lines have disappeared, you know, if your masking fluid's pulled it up, don't worry about it. You can just draw them back in because you'll be able to see roughly where you had them. I'm going to use a colour called Gloria, which is this one here. And it's this lovely gold colour. And I'm going to use this for our stigma. So I literally only need a couple of dots here. So this was our little match sticks that we did earlier. So we'll pop those in and just let those dry a little bit. And we want to pop in our little stems here. I can't remember the actual name for the part that comes down from there. I must look that up. Uh, and so this is just the straight orange. So this was the colour that we used in the middle of some of these. And I'm literally just going to put in a couple of lines. This is all going to join together like this. And now we have to wait. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we have to wait for that to dry. So I'm going back to my Sea White Synthetic brush. And we're going back to sap green. Plain old sap green. And I'm going to dilute it a little bit. And we're going to start here. So I'm going to put the green at the base. And it's just a teeny weeny little bit like that. And then I'm going to pull it out with a damp brush. And I want to do that all the way round. Yeah, just fade it out a little bit. Okay, we can use that kind of flicking motion if you want as well. And there we go. And now I'm going to switch back to my sparkly paints and I have a colour called Spira, which is this one here. Now it's green, but it has a gold shimmer to it. And quite often, as the colour fades out from the middle of these flowers, it goes from green through to yellow. So I thought that would be a nice touch. And again, it's sticking with our sparkly theme. So again, I'm just going to pop a little bit of that down, clean my brush off. And then with a damp brush, I'm going to flick that into these other masked parts, like this. And again, while that's damp, we're going to take a tiny, tiny bit of a warm yellow. So I've got cadmium yellow, and I'm just gonna pop that in at the ends here and overlap it very slightly with the green that we've just done. It's very, very subtle. Just a little bit of an overlap there. And again, we're going to leave that to dry and then we're going to separate out these petals just with a bit of shade. And while we're waiting on that, I can show you our caladium now, which is nice and dry. And look at that. Absolutely great fun. Not complicated. And it's turned out beautifully. And you can see that Julia's paints have done, done a great job there. And depending on what way you tilt it in the light... It just makes that simple painting a little bit more interesting. And that's very satisfying for a quick painting. Well, it is for me, at least. I hope it's satisfying for you too. But can you imagine doing a, a whole plant of these? That would be great fun. And it would look absolutely beautiful hanging in someone's living room. You know, if you did a whole shrub. Really, really good fun. Really simple to do and nice results as well. And you could get some really nice contrast in there from these stems. You know, you could have them really, really dark and some of the leaves really popping out with these kind of brighter yellowish greens. Okay, so to finish off over here now, we want to grab our Sea White Synthetic brush, so your non-sparkly brush. And I'm going to use indigo for this. Payne's Grey is another great colour if you want to use that for a shadow colour. Or you can even go into the sort of more neutral brown, so something like a sepia colour would do as well. Now this is where we think about, although we've done this centre section as a whole, we need to now think about these individual petals and the fact that they're overlapping and that's just going to give us a nice finishing touch here. So from this centre part, this one is very much in behind. So if I just take that from that centre point and I'm just popping in a tiny little bit, you've got to go really easy here. So just pop some of that indigo in and then spread it out, especially around these areas here. And you can see that's pushed that petal back, hasn't it? And that's kind of what we're looking for here. And it's amazing the difference that tiny little bit 
of indigo makes. It really is. And you don't need to go crazy with it. You can see I've hardly, hardly used any at all. And just even over the top of that green there in at this centre part. And there you have it, everyone. That is your two 15 minute flowers for today with a little bit of a twist. And if I tilt this now, you'll just be able to see a very, very slight shimmer in this one. So it's very subtle, but it's there. And it just lets those uh, those little stigma pop out at the front there. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I've had great fun. I love doing these. And it doesn't take too much away from my very busy mooing of cows and one thing and another. I hope this has inspired you to pick up a paintbrush and try some of these for yourself. Oh, it's shiny. And again, if you want to pick up some of Julia's paints, the links are down in the description. So all that's left to say is please stay safe, take care of each other, and I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So have a good day, everyone, and bye-bye for now.